Hi y'all. I am at the Great Salt Peter Cave Reserve in Rockcastle County, Kentucky, and this is the only weekend a year that the cave is open for tourists because they keep it closed to protect it and that kind of thing. I'll talk about that some more later. And I've got one of America's favorite hippies with me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go here and see what's going on. It'll be the first time I've been in this cave in years. So I'm really excited. It's prediction time. Who's gonna fall down in the cave? Will it be Jocelyn, me, somebody else in our group, or nobody? Before we get in here, let me give you a little bit of the cave's history. And we'll start from today and work our way backwards. Today, the cave is managed and owned by the Rock Hassel Karst Conservancy. And they are a nonprofit volunteer group that works to preserve the cave and take care of the artifacts inside. They open the cave one weekend a year in May, and tours are free. They have a big to-do out here, but it's the only time of the year you can come see the cave. Before this group got a hold of the cave, it was privately owned, but you can't say it was abandoned, but it wasn't open to the public. And for some years when I was growing up, this was known as a party spot. Now from the early 1980s work and way backwards to the 1930s, the cave was a tourist attraction, and people would come in off the interstate or off the old Dixie Highway to come see the cave and learn about saltpeter production. It was also the site of several events hosted by the Renfro Valley Barn Dance and John Lair, and I had a video about that a few weeks back. I'll leave the link up top for you if you wanna see that. And before it became a tourist attraction and a site for the barn dance, it was an industrial complex that produced saltpeter. After the American Revolution, the new country knew that it needed a source for gunpowder because all the gunpowder then came from Great Britain. Gunpowder can be made from saltpeter, which comes from bat poop in the dirt in the cave. And before it was an industrial complex producing saltpeter, it was just a cave in the woods that many sailors around here know about. It was first discovered by sailors in 1798 and of course, it was known by Native Americans before then. Um, you know, after watching Hellier on YouTube, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel weird being in caves. <laughs> Y'all need to watch Hellier. So these are actual props from the movie Fire Down Below, or Fire in the Hole, or whatever it was called. <laughs> I can't remember. Down Below. Down Below. And um, if you take my Appalachian Pop Quizzes on Sundays, that was one of the questions a couple of weeks ago, and he told us that these rocks are actually movie props. They're not real. It is very strange to think there is a whole mountain right there over our heads. <laughs> a whole mountain. Now up there where you see people taking selfies, that was the stage back when they used to have the Renfro Valley Barn Dance in here and other kinds of events. Now back when I was a reporter, I got to have dinner in this room and our sister city's um, delegation from Japan came. They brought them down here and we ate prime rib <laughs> right here in this room. That was a very interesting experience. And the delegation that came loved it. Now we're up on the stage where the Renfro Valley Barn Dance used to be. Ah. 
I'd love to go back in there, but I know I'd like to. This, this rock right here looks like it was probably part of the movie props they were talking about they put in here, because, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's busted, that makes sense. Just think, Steven Seagal could have sat right there on that rock. collect a whole bunch of dirt that, uh, and then wash water through it. That water will pick up the, uh, the nitrate and wash out. Then they're going to boil that down and the crystals left behind are your salt heater and that's used in the, in the making of what essential thing? Gunpowder. That's right. We're going into the squatty part. Hey, up there in Wisconsin, there's a cave up there I went through. There was a rock called Scalpel Rock. I found out why they called it Scalpel Rock. You noticed that I used my hand. I'm good and hunched down. <laughs> as much head trauma as I've had in my life, I don't need any more. <laughs> Okay, I'm always talking about Appalachian engineering. This is water lines that were made out of trees to bring water into the cave to flush the salt peter out of the dirt. This is one that was underground. Some of them were underground and some were above the ground. And this is the underground version that they've dug out. If you can see these ridges down in the ground, I'll try to get closer so you can see better. It's a better spot. These are tracks from the ox carts that where the oxes were used to pull the dirt down to where they could wash the saltpeter out of the dirt. The wood laying there is original to the cave from back when they mined it. It's, it's in a V. That's where they're, the vats were shaped like a V for the stuff. To it's like a trough. Okay. So th this is a leftover of troughs from where they washed the salt water. This is the north entrance of the cave that stays sealed off. And he was saying they don't have proof but they're pretty sure that the doors on this entrance and the other one come from the old jail in Mount Vernon. That's pretty cool. If it's true or not, it's a good story. Now we're back out here to the big Echo Auditorium room where the barn dances used to be. It's colder over here. It kind of got yeah, hot. It got warm. Really. <laughs> I about took my hoodie back off. I can feel the humidity when we went up. You know, you never know when you think about it. We could have had ancestors that worked in this stuff mm -hmm. that we've just never traced down. Yeah. You never know. Especially me. My yeah. family come from a mountain or two over. Right. 
that wooden thing right there is a replica of one of the V vats that they used to bring water in. I showed you a little earlier one that had sit and disintegrated that was down in the ditch. That's what they originally looked like when they were together. And those chairs sitting there have been here since they used to have the barn dances. Isn't that wild? Probably not sitting in that same spot, but that's what they're from. <laughs> He was telling us that the black marks and the color changes on the ceiling are because when they would get finished with the water they were using to sift out the saltpeter from the dirt, they would boil it off instead of having to haul it outside the cave. And that's what these color changes are from. It's really gray over here. They did a lot of burning on this side. Now the area we're getting ready to walk into is called Signature Alley. And it's where people left graffiti back in the day, probably from the barn dances and probably from before that and probably from after that when people come down here and party. Straight walk there, a little damp. Sixty-five. It's still off a of bride, ain't it? Yeah, it <laughs> a lot of changes in here. Okay. That's wild. Whoa. If you look up here, guys, let's slick on the floors. So take it easy here, little resident bat. All right, Jocelyn. Yeah. That way I got a good shot of you if you hit that water. <laughs> He's asleep and he's got to be on he won't bug us. That is slick. Right here, okay. Okay, folks. 
We are coming into the part of the cave where it's going to be very tight. And also, some of the rocks are very sharp. I can caution you. When I, when I are we squatting down in there? No. Uh oh. There's a little there. I'm going to have to duck down a little bit. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Get this water drip in. Can you see it? Oh, I'm ducking more than I need to. <laughs> <laughs> There's room here. We are almost on all fours. <laughs> I want you guys to go under this. Oh, no, no, it's right. just the minerals you got to drink down. Do this, this way. <clears throat> there are a few bats, but they don't really <clears throat> show up with yeah. all this activity. Yeah, not to mention this is a uh, razor blade shirt. Yeah. Maybe we got more glowstone. <laughs> As we go along here, we are going to be going to our sideways shuffle. And and be careful down right here because there's a rock that I just got too slow. Okay. <laughs> oh no, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> now I see why they said don't work with me. This is interesting. Everybody, take a breath. <laughs> Johnson, they may have to grease us up and get us out of here. <laughs> You'll make it, no problem. It just is around the bed, you're immediately out of the room. I guess that wasn't as bad as it looked. But. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now we're out. And you can tell there are a lot of people here today. <laughs> a lot. And what you're seeing is only like one part of the park and it goes way back up in that holler. So, this has been a very popular event and I hope they did good raising money because they need a lot of money to keep this kind of thing preserved. And it's good that they're doing it because this cave is a big part of our local history that we don't get told about a whole lot. This is Crooked Creek. And the creek almost circles the cave, not entirely, but this is the same creek on the other side of the mountain that they would get their water to use to sift the saltpeter out of the rocks and the dirt and then bullet off in that one room that I showed you. I'd love to get in it. I wanna get in it. <laughs> so that's it from our tour of the Great Saltpeter Cave at the Great Saltpeter Cave preserve in Rock Castle County. It's kind of between Livingston and Mount Vernon. I really couldn't begin to tell you what road it's on or anything like that, but I'll put all the important links and things down in the description. That way, if you want to come next year, you can. It's usually the second or third weekend in May, somewhere in there. I'd start watching earlier than that about spring if you're wanting to come, especially with this crowd. We probably should have come a little earlier because it's packed. Mm -hmm. It's packed. So Jocelyn, this is your first time ever really knowing anything about this cave, ain't it? Yeah, it is. So what'd you think? Oh, it was amazing. It's amazing. different. It's different, um, but yeah, highly recommend next year. Anybody gets the chance to come out here. 
should definitely come. Well, what I didn't mention was the Livingston Volunteer Fire Department is out here and they have free soup, beans, and cornbread. So this is a true Kentucky experience if you're coming through the area in May to get to do something like this. And one of the really cool things is, up where they were selling souvenirs, they had these vintage stickers and they feel like they are probably from the 60s or 50s, just the plastic on them, and said that they only had a certain amount of them that they dug out. So I bought an extra and I'm gonna give this away. If you're interested in winning it, leave a comment down in the description and I will do a random draw sometime in the next two weeks. I'll probably do another video just talking about this contest so you know exactly when I'm gonna draw because I don't have it thought out at this point, it just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, I appreciate y'all watching. Like and subscribe if you want to, no pressure. And we'll talk to you next time. Adios amigos. Hasta. <laughs>